As I described, so I'm the Vice President of our Retail Automation Division. Um, I joined Flextronics in 2006, came from an acquisition um, into Flextronics where we focused on uh, software and system integration and what Marty was describing around emerging technologies and um, helping customers go into a global footprint. So that's exactly what I've been doing inside of our retail automation division since 2006. So a little bit of a background, right? Most people know Flextronics for being world-class manufacturing, logistics. What a lot of people don't understand about Flextronics is that we have these divisions and organizations within Flex who go very deep into technologies and into certain markets. Um, I happen to have the honor to, to run our retail automation and um, self-serve markets, which I'll describe that for you a little bit in my presentation. Give you a little bit of perspective. So um, we've been in the industry um, from, a, from a Flextronics perspective since 2007. I've actually been going at it since 1997, so probably one of the first 50 people or so that have aggressively been going after you know, kiosks and different systems. So between me and my team um, in the broader Flextronics, we gain a lot of experience in this area. Um, I'm gonna share with you a little bit today about some of the complexities that you may not think about if you are looking into the retail spaces and how these systems come together. Um, we have over 150 projects now under our belt. So we've got an expansive uh, set of experiences um, to help our customers understand more. Um, we sit on the board of advisors for the self in this industry. Um, I happen to hold a couple patents in this area, um, as does Flextronics now. And we've won some industry awards and we've got another one that's actually going to be announced next week um, for the work that we've been doing on the Pepsi um, systems that many of you may have seen that are out there for the interactive uh, Pepsi. So <clears throat> what makes self-service complex? And so I'm going to work you from the customer's view and I'm going to intermix it a little bit with um, Flextronics' view. So from our, our customer's view, they start with there's a problem or some objective that they're wanting to solve, such as driving sales, expanding their territory, increasing their hours of operations, and they'll look at self-serve or retail systems as a method to do this in an unattended way um, and have the equipment do what employees historically had done, right? And so as they think about how do I do this, they start thinking about, well, I gotta, I gotta help the customer, I gotta under, help the customer understand what it is that I'm asking them to do. Because a box just sitting there, you don't intuitively think, well, what am I supposed to do? Right? So the mindset starts to click in for the customers around, okay, I've got this objective. I need to inform or engage my customer to help them understand what it is that I want them to do with it. So this starts getting into a lot of the design principles. How do you stand out from the crowd? How do you educate and communicate to your customers that this technology is for them? Now, the good news is, is that we're pretty far down the track in self-service, the airline industry, photo kiosk, self-checkout, you know, Redbox, which is uh, a program we make. These technologies have now built an uh, ecosystem where the consumer inherently understands these technologies are for us, right? And with so much of it now happening, there's a new challenge for the customers, which is, well, how do I stand out? How do I, how do I stand out amongst all the different systems that are out there? So we have a process, and we call it our method eight, that we help our customers go through. How do I engage the customer? How do I create the information? How do I drive interactions with those customers that, that create a transaction? Because at the end of the day, it's about creating a transaction. It's a retail system, right? So then once we create that transaction, now how do we fulfill it? Because this machine typically is standing away from employees that are on a daily interaction. So now we start talking about, well, how do we get products in them? How do we get products out of them? And we work from there. So that gets into the replenishment. And for our customers who are driving towards success, they have to think about how do I optimize this thing? Because I'm going to go in a big territory and then have to manage this network of different systems, right? And that's where it really gets into the enterprise. So if you think about it, the concept of this machine doing the work of employees starts to get fairly complex, right? And the good news is that we have systems and processes and we've been a part of, um, you know, many of the world's best successes in self-service. So we can draw upon those to help our, help our customers. So to get it started and what creates it complex, if you start it from our customer's viewpoint, 
they, they typically want to start from the industrial design and what does this machine look like, even though we walk kind of through those things. We actually come in and help our customers understand that it's just really an information technology business. And these machines are really smart. And if you want them to do the things that you're trying to achieve your objectives, while it's important to stand out from the crowd and such, we really got to get the IT part right. Because this is where you can fail miserably if you don't start getting these pieces in place. And this creates a lot of complexity because when you look at all these different systems that are out there, there's a whole lot of parts that have to go into these to, to drive the transaction that you're trying to drive. So this is where Flextronics steps up and has um, a value add to our customers. So our supply chain organization, especially within my self-serve division, retail automation, we focus on these component parts. The good news is, is many of these parts we actually play a role in with our, with our partners and our suppliers, and we make some of these parts. So we get to see the supply chain the whole way through, which adds value back in to our customers. So we understand the parts, we know how to bring them together, and we have some intellectual property around software, motion control boards, and other pieces that we can help enable our customers to go to market faster. What we're seeing increasingly is that once you take that, I, that, that information technology, which drives the smarts of the system, we then see the customers wanting to get pretty advanced with the mechatronics. This is how you're actually taking and managing the products inside of these cabinets and boxes, right? So for example, I'm showing you uh, three different DVD systems. The other complexities that you can run into and where Flextronics excels is that we're able to take those requirements for the customers, and here's DVD systems, three different ones that we've worked on, and if you look at it, all three of them are very different because the owners and the entrepreneurs and the businesses have a different model or a mindset for how they think they want to solve the problem. So this is where Flextronics plays a key role, is that we can take your vision and how you want to handle this, we can draw on all of our experiences and deliver back out with you a solution that meets your objectives, right? And again, I love to use the DVD because it's really the same objective, which was to dispense DVDs, but you have com three completely different ways that the, cu that the customers thought was the better way to do it. Right? And again, this is where Flextronics can step up and, and help. Now, so you have all this hardware, you have this mechatronics, and now you need to make it all work together. And this is another area where a number of our customers will come to us because we have a platform of technology that we, it's over 10 years in development that's built for integrating all these components together and then creating a user interface that the consumers then can interact with. And we've created the platform to where it's open, to where we can do the development or our customers can do development in this environment that we've created that automates a lot of the features to integrating to the hardware, tracking how the hardware is going to work, and then once they go into the field, it gives all the reporting and diagnostics to tell you whether the machine's operating the way it's supposed to operate. And these are all features that come out of the box that we've packaged to enable our customers to go to market faster with a more robust system. And so this is really what our customers are thinking about. All that other stuff is kind of the, the ugly part of it. This is the part that our customers start to get really excited about. And so how do I take all this, how do I package it up into a system that, again, engages the consumers and stands out, drives a transaction, can scale, right, can be manufactured. And this is where our organization steps in and helps solve these problems. And as you see, this is just a handful. We have over 150 different projects we've worked on. This is just a handful that I wanted to share with you to show you the complexities of the type of systems. From extremely large systems, that's a full 24-7 automated retail solution, down to payment devices. So we span that whole spectrum of different systems and technologies. So if you think about automated retail, you've got robotics and conveyors and solenoids and actuators and all sorts of various different motion control. We have an organization of experts that focus on these technologies, right? So this is what, in my organization, retail automation self-service, this is what defines the business. This is what me and my team wake up every single morning thinking about and how to help our customers. And so this is a good summary. Um, and this is, a, this is a, a picture that I actually suggest to, to customers as we go into conversations to say, 
This is something you should look at and you think about because as you're trying to think through innovation, there's a lot of the pieces that have been done somewhere else before. And part of the value proposition of Flextronics is that because we're global and we have these different divisions where, where our divisions go really deep into technologies, we have an advantage to where we get to work with our peers across the divisions to where customers may say, hey, I want to do this really fancy lighting system, right? Well, we happen to do a lot of the lighting systems in, in cars. And you'll see today, the cars today have really sophisticated lighting systems. So when I have customers that come to me, because we do slot machines, we do jukeboxes, we do those type of things that have a lot of lighting features, I get to go leverage other parts of Flextronics to bring in some expertise in those areas. So if you're doing RFID, near field communications, these are all different technologies that we have organizations inside of Flextronics that we can go tap on them to bring those solutions into our solutions. And that's a key value proposition for Flex. So at the end of the day, what we do and what I drive for in running my organization is I want to be your one-stop solution, right? I just showed you a series of different complexities and you saw a whole bunch of different pictures. Reality is, is a lot of those pictures are handled by various different suppliers. Think about how complex it can get just to manage the suppliers, bringing all those things together, getting them into software, and then having your customer interact with essentially a cash register. It gets pretty complex. And these are the things where Flextronics can bring our skills and our experiences um, to bear. And we'll drive it from what you're trying to accomplish all the way back into our factories as a one-stop solution. Which is where Columbia comes into play, especially for my organization, right? You guys had an opportunity to walk the line and you saw um, the Kodak line. So that's one of the most successful um, deployments of a self-service system that's in the market today. There's over 105,000 of those things out in the marketplace, right? This is the organization working in collaboration with mine on how we bring those type of solutions together. And you may not know that we also have uh, replicated that solution over in Europe. So that's the other thing that Marty was talking about as a gateway to a global system. That's how it works. So from design to manufacturing to the logistics to starting somewhere and then growing into a global environment, we have a solution for you. And for any of you that are interested in retail automation, self-service, I would love the opportunity to, to get to know you and speak to you. And, and I assure you that you'll find working with our organization and in Columbia specifically that you're going to get quality products and great manufacturing and it will help you grow.